All right, we're going to go over uh, some of the problems from the Chapter 4 quiz that uh, several people had problems with. Um, so this would be only problems that quite a few of you had problems with. So on the blue test, um, number one, uh, it says find a coterminal angle positive and negative uh, to pi over 6. So an angle that's coterminal to pi over 6, one positive, one negative. Um, so we've got to go over what coterminal means. If we know what that means, it's just, it's going to be so easy to find a coterminal angle. Um, here's pi over 6 right here. Okay. Ish. Okay, there's, there's pi over 6. A coterminal angle, if we break it down to what it means, uh, terminal is the side where you stop measuring the angle. So there's an initial side, here's the terminal side. Um, so if I want an angle that is co, the same, or with, terminal, the same ending side, the same side that is the terminal side, uh, there are an infinite number of possibilities. Um, but here's one simple one. If I go just up to pi over 6 and keep going past it and bring it all the way around again back to 2 pi and terminate at the same place, that's coterminal. Okay, we're in uh, radians, so to find this coterminal angle, we'll need to deal with radians. And we can see in the picture, we can go from pi over 6 and go a full rotation, come all the way back around to where we started, right, starting on this blue thing, uh, this light blue line. Uh, that's a full 2 pi, so that's a pi over 6 and another 2 pi radian. So we take pi over 6 plus 2 pi. We can't uh, do that without common denominators, so 12 pi over 6. And this is 13 pi over 6. There is a positive angle that is coterminal with pi over 6. Um, we could start at pi over 6 and go the other direction. Okay, so right there. Okay, the actual angle measure is going to be from here around there, but we can see that if we start here, it's going to be pi over 6. It's going to go, you know, we go up to pi over 6 and subtract 2 pi. So pi over 6 minus 2 pi equals pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6. That's negative 11 pi over 6. Okay. Um, I don't know how to break it down any more than that. That's the same explanation I've given uh, lots of times. If you don't rely on remembering this, this and this. You can memorize that you add 2 pi and subtract 2 pi. But uh, if you forget that that's what you're supposed to do, uh, once you get to the quiz or the test, you're sunk. But if you remember the picture and you remember what it means for angles to be coterminal, and uh, if you could draw a picture of finding a coterminal angle, you remind yourself, oh, it's just a full rotation around the, from the angle that we start at. And that's it. So I know that I would need to add 2 pi to get, or sorry, add 2 pi to get a positive one and su subtract 2 pi to get a, a negative one. Um, there's some exceptions. What if it was uh, 15 pi over 6? This is, that problem's done. But what if we had 15 pi over 6 and we wanted a negative coterminal angle and we subtract 2 pi? Well, then that would be 15 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6. Well, that's still positive. That's 3 pi over 6. Right. If we wanted to find a coterminal angle uh, with three pi over with with five pi over fifteen pi over six, that's negative. Well, just take three pi over six, subtract two pi. In this, in the the picture, that would be going around again. So we take three pi over six minus uh, twelve pi over six. That's negative uh, nine pi over six. Um, I'm realizing that these were divisible by 3. Uh, this, it doesn't matter, but this could be written as 5 pi over 3. Um, it could be written.
written as 5 pi over 2, no? Yeah, 2. But whatever, it all works itself out. This is negative 3 pi over 2. Um, but sometimes, even when we go a full rotation, we don't get to the negative, so we have to do it again. That wasn't the case here. This one was pretty straightforward. Um, for number 2, it should be even simpler here because we're more familiar with degrees. If I want to start at 190 and go all the way around the circle and wind up with an angle that is coterminal with, co with 190, here's 190 right here, about that much. If I want to find an angle that's coterminal, just keep going around, go a full rotation, a full rotation in degrees. Uh, we could state that in our sleep, that's 360 degrees. Okay, so 0, 5, 450 degrees, 190 degrees minus 360 degrees, uh, that is going to be, uh, let's see, negative, let's see, this should have been, this should have been 550, this would be negative 230. Um, those are two Cope's terminal angles, one positive, one negative. Um, so, let's see. This is number 13 on the blue test. Um, they want you to find the cosine of 22 pi over 3. Draw my unit circle over here. I need to find 22 pi over 3. Okay, here's pi over 3. This is 2 pi over 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay. three rotations around and then down to here and now we just look at our unit circle this is at negative one half and negative root three over two the cosine is this guy here <coughs> so that would have been a all right just counting out those those angles on your unit circle is uh, a very helpful thing to be able to do, a necessary thing to be able to do. Um, so here's a, this is a kind of troubling actually to me. This is two on the calculator portion, okay? I asked you to both find the amount of cable that's needed for the zip line. This is the zip line. Um, we know that this, the distance from the bottom of the support to the bottom of the zip line is 75 root 3 feet, and this is 75 feet. Okay, and to find this side, we should be able to deduce, um, or I don't know, not even deduce, just remember that we're supposed to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we know that 75 squared plus here is where the problem came in, plus the other side squared this side squared, squared, times itself. What a lot of you did was 75 root 3 with the 2 there. Okay, that kind of is right, and some of you did this correctly, and some of you did it incorrectly, I guess, depending on how you define that. The way it's written, this just means square the root of 3, and don't square 75. Is 75 part of this side? Yes, it is. Should it get squared? Yes, it should. Uh, we should multiply this side by itself. If you don't multiply 75 by 75, you're not multiplying the side by itself. This is what you really needed to do. Um, this is going to be equal, equal to c squared. So where a lot of you got um, 225, you needed to multiply 75 times 75 times root 3 times root 3. If I'm going to multiply this side by itself, I'm going to multiply 75 root 3 by 75 root 3, okay, and we can reorder this, 75 squared times root 3 squared, so we get 75 squared times 3. Um, what that actually is, I'll grab my calculator, 
uh, and figure that out. <coughs> uh, 75 squared times 3. I know root 3 squared is 3. So we should have gotten 16,875. Yes, that's what that should have been. Um, let's move that over. And 75 squared is 5,625. We add those together. Uh, 22,500. That's c squared. So we take the square root of c squared. We take the square root of uh, taking the square root of everything. Taking the square root of 22,500, uh, and that turns out to be 150. This is 150. Okay. Uh, it's it saddens my heart a little bit that. Um, that that got missed when you, when you know you're supposed to square this side and you only square the square root of three you're not squaring this number this side of this triangle um, maybe you put in 75 square root of three and then squared it okay um, and got the 225 you just you can't be that dependent on your calculator to read your mind you have to know exactly what you're telling your calculator to do. You're telling your calculator to square the thing that it, that is right below this, okay? So it sees this as an entire number. It squares it, multiplies it by 75. It does not square this whole thing. If I want it to square the whole thing, I need to use parentheses. Um, so let's work on that. That's something that uh, that in pre-calc we shouldn't be struggling with, but too many of you did it. Uh, for me not to talk about it. It's kind of kind of rough. So then we're supposed to find the angle of elevation. Um, this angle down here. Um, a lot of you just looked at the picture, saw that as it was drawn, it, it looked like a 45 degree angle, so you said 45. That's wrong. Okay, If it was a 45 degree angle, these two sides would be the same. And they're not. Um, so how do we figure that out. Well, we, we don't know the uh, angle, but we do know the sides, and we do know um, uh, information about a lot of angles. Like, say the sine of this angle is 75 over 150. That turns out to be a half. What angle that could fit inside of a, a rectangle, or sorry, a triangle, what angle that could fit inside of a triangle would have a sine of one half. We look at our unit circle. Of course, all those angles are going to be in the first quadrant. We look for a sine of one half. We see right here there's a sine of one half. This is a cosine of root three over two. This angle is 30 degrees. Okay. Just a little bit of deduction here um, to, to say that if this guy has a sine of one half, which it does, then it must be 30 degrees because 30 degrees has a sine of one half. And of course, it's not going to be any other angle on here because it needs to go inside of a triangle. So theta must have been 30 degrees. Um, so there's that. Also, for number three on the calculator part, it said to convert 3.79 into. Um, into degrees, from radians to degrees. You know this is in radians because it's not in degrees. There's no degree symbol here. What I saw a lot, too many people doing, was just putting a pi there. Do you see pi here? No. Why is there a pi here? Pi does not mean radians. Pi means 3.14, 159, so on and so on, forever and ever. It's a number. It is not a unit. Uh, the unit is radians. Um, so... If um, if there's no pi there, don't just throw pi on there for no reason. There's no pi. Okay, we multiply this by 180 over pi because not because it's 100 
degree, 180 degrees to radians. This is the number of radians. It is a number of radians that is equal to 180 degrees. So there is no pi to cancel with. There's still a pi here in the denominator. What cancels is the units, which we don't typically write down. But if you wanted to, and it helped you to see what was going on, you can write down radians and, and cross them out. But see, this gets multiplied by 180 and still gets divided by pi. Okay, so 3.79 times 180, and divide that by pi. And we get 217.151. I emphasize the 151 because for some reason, even though it said report to three decimal places, you just said 217 degrees. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why that is, but uh, it happened quite a bit. So this is it right here. There is no pi, so don't just put a pi there um, because you know it's in radians. There, if it's not there, it's not there. Don't force it to be there. Okay. Um, also, I thought I'd show you the extra credit questions from each. So, this is the extra credit from the blue. Um, there was five choices, and we're supposed to figure out which this is equivalent to. Okay. Um, if it were equal to, say, like B or D, which are both adding things together, one is secant plus cosecant, one is cosecant, or cosine plus secant, um, probably then these could be rewritten, you know, like tangent could be written as cosecant or something. So um, I wouldn't put my money on that. I would say it's probably going to be sine squared cosecant times secant or 1. And a lot of times what I'll do is, if, I, if they're being added together, um, I'll take them into like a fraction form and add them together um, by getting common denominators. So let's see how that goes. I haven't done this yet, so... We may run into a dead end, but that's okay. In terms of sine and cosine, which is the strategy you should use a lot of times, okay? If there's nothing squared in there, if, there's, if you see something squared, probably Pythagorean kind of an identity. If not, probably just write it in terms of sine and cosine. It may turn into a Pythagorean identity here in a second. So anyway, we, if we want to add these together, we need to get a common denominator, which will be cosine times sine. So we'll multiply this by sine over sine, and we'll get sine squared over sine cosine. Of course, this will have the same denominator, so we'll add on. Well, this will get multiplied by cosine over cosine, and this will be cosine squared. Um, sine squared plus cosine squared, that's Pythagorean identity we should be really familiar with uh, very soon. That's 1. Uh, over sine cosine, and this is the same as 1 over sine times 1 over cosine. 1 over sine is the cosecant, and this is the secant. So, yep, it's C. All right, I'll do the uh, extra credit from the, what, the pink one next. That looks like this. Secant of theta plus tangent of theta times 1 minus sine of theta. Um, so, no matter what choice we pick, it's they're all just like this one thing. Um, it's sine, it's 1, it's cosine, it's secant. It's not 1 times another, it's not 1 plus another. Um, so I would say definitely at some point we're going to multiply these together, but uh, maybe I would write this in terms of sine and cosine first and see if there's a little bit of simplifying we could do. So we have um, 1 over the cosine plus the sine over the cosine times 1 minus sine. This is, uh, they have common denominators, so we can do 1 plus sine over the cosine. And we can multiply this by 1 minus sine. We should have plenty of practice with conjugates, right? Good things happen when we multiply by conjugates. So we get 1 minus sine squared theta over the cosine of theta. This is 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So we get cosine squared of theta 
over cosine of theta. And just the cosines cancel out. The cosine here cancels out with one of these cosines. And we're left with just the cosine. So that is C. OK. And now for what the, I think it's yellow. And that one looks like sine theta plus cosine theta squared. Okay, if you picked E, then they got you. That's what, how one of the ways they wanted to trick you. Um, this is not the same as sine squared plus cosine squared. This shouldn't be happening anymore. If we square this, it means multiply it by itself, not to distribute the square to both. If you square this, it means multiply it by itself. So. If we were to square this, which I would suggest, we would multiply this by itself. So we would get sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. Uh, if we take the sine squared plus cosine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 plus 2 sine cosine. I tried to write two things at once, can't do that. Um, there it is, that is C, exactly that choice C. Um, so we're going to want to use a lot of uh, writing in terms of sine and cosine, that's already done in this particular example, so that's not going to help us a whole lot. Uh, if, if we had uh, if that were helpful, we might get some cancellation, um, or we might wind up having common denominators here. Um, or sorry, that would be um, this one. We wind up having common denominators when we wrote it in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, here we wrote it in terms of sine and cosine, and then um, added them together by finding common denominators, and then uh, we used the Pythagorean identities. Um, here we wound up using a Pythagorean identity as well. Here this is already in terms of sine and cosine. We did wind up again using a Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Um, so just a lot of, uh, to, to do it as quickly as I did, you just have a lot of experience. Until then, it's some trial and error and some common sense. Um, you know, you, you would like some things to cancel out. Maybe if we put things in terms of sine and cosine and, and they're multiplied, maybe they'll cancel out. Or um, if we multiply things together, maybe we'll get squares like this. And um, we use Pythagorean identity and so on. Um, but it does come with practice, so it does take practice. Um, but that is all. If there's any other questions you have, let me know. Thanks for watching.